<laughs> How long have you been uh, volunteering here? I've been a volunteer here since we opened up. But I used to be Since the first since, opening? Well, I used to bring dogs here from Waterbury Pound. Mm -hmm. Whatever uh, North Shore wouldn't take, yeah. I would go there. And I knew that they were already um, checked. They did a check. Yep. So I would take them. And I would bring them up here. And Gabby Catuccio would take them from me. I brought him a lot. Bailey was one of them. He was a lifer here. He was one of the dogs that I took out of the Waterbury Pound. And, um... There was a, Mr. Wiggles, he was a gorgeous cocker spaniel, he was another one that they looked at and then they didn't want it for North Shore. Yeah. So I knew that these were good jobs, so that's why I would bring them up. And I would do that all the time. And that's how I worked with them, it was like out of, not hands on in, in the shelter, it was bringing the dog to them. Right. And then when they started opening this up, Joe asked me if I would work with them. And I said, okay, and they made me the cat manager, and uh, ever since I've been with them, and, you know, we've been pretty productive, I think. So you've been running the cat department for four or five years now? How long have we been open? The bills, I've been in the building. <clears throat> I don't know exactly, what, is it 012 that it opened, or 11? Yeah, I was the, from the very first yeah. day. On the very first day, yeah. I was still here. <coughs> so I, I come here about, it seems like it's been about five days a week now, but wow. when, I, when my, when my um, volunteers have vacation. And then you come weekends and you do adoptions. Yeah, and, I do adoptions. And you still run the restaurant too? Well, I'm, no, <laughs> my daughter does that. I have no time for any of that anymore. So um, you're, you're done with the, with the restaurant, you just... Pretty much focus on this. Yes, pretty much focus on this because my daughter has it all in check. Yeah. And my other daughter's there now too, so oh, good. that picks up the slack. And my granddaughter's there, my daughter-in-law's there, so that the family is taking care of that, and I'm over here. And then I take care of my own animals. I mean, we have, we have quite a few animals at home. Like animals that you've rescued as well. Right. Probably blind, three-legged, all the ones Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Eat, eat extra I just lost him Saturday to um, oh, no. lymphoma, cancer. I was hoping to bring her today to uh, the cancer specialist, but she couldn't make it. Yeah, you were telling me about that the other day. Well, that she couldn't make it. She was holding the paw. She wouldn't hear me. We had to carry her up and down stairs. And he goes, Ma, we can't do this to her anymore. And I was going to do chemo, I was going to do all those things, but you know, they tell me that it, they don't give the chemo to the animal the way they give it to us. They don't give us the, the strength, they just like make them comfortable. Yeah. I couldn't put her through that. I couldn't put her through that. You know what chemo does to us. Yeah, no, I know. Absolutely. So I, do, I wasn't going to do that to her. So, you know, when she couldn't eat, she couldn't urinate, and she was holding the paw, and her neck was swollen because of the lymphoma. Started, I thought she had small legs. Yeah. And then it went through the whole body. And I wasn't going to make her suffer. So yeah, and the chances that that would have been successful no. not very good. So. No, no. Yeah, and then I have a cat that has no cerebellum and it looks like it has MS. And he's blind in one eye. And uh, yeah, I have them all. <laughs> Those are the animals that people didn't want. And then I have that, that chihuahua that was here that uh, I still have him. Oh, yeah. Because uh, Kathy said, I said, Kathy, he, he bites, and he will bite you, he come to my house, he'll bite you. Yeah. I have to pay attention to him. But he loves the people in my home. He has a, my yard is just like this yard out here, fenced in for them, that they can run yeah. and do whatever. And they come upstairs, and they're very content. So aside from running the cat department at rescue here, you have your own rescue at home? Yeah. I not only work here, but my connections are also out there, you know, with the other organizations and the groups. No, I know. You've brought quite a few dogs and still yeah. from people that you're connected with. But. Right. And we all really kind of work together. Mm -hmm. So um, when I have a, a cat that comes in, and it's like, not that it comes in here, when they come to us and they say, a 12, 13-year-old cat, I know that I can't bring them in here. I first of all, don't have the room, and then we don't take over the cats. Uh, what and what happens is, I call my friends out there in Deep River or wherever. Yeah, you're clear for Samson. I call my friends and I say, please help me with this animal. 
right away. Right away we house that cat or a dog yeah. someplace else, yeah. So it's always good to have the connection out here. You want to take a picture of here? <clears throat> Is that Siamese? So, mean, I'm not sticking my fingers in there. You're braver than here, I am. Here, here, you want to take a picture? <laughs> I got him. Without the door, you mean? Yeah. He's pretty, though. Oh, my God, he's gorgeous. He's beautiful. Like I said, we've got people from down south that want him, but we're not letting him go just to anybody, only because we want to keep track of him. We want to know that he's safe. And if anything happens, we want to know they can put him back to us. Well, I mean, like, a lot of dogs from the south come up here, and yes. I just feel like they're kind of... We have enough dogs up here that need help. We don't need... You know what I mean? Right. How do you, you know... Yeah, it's hard. It's very hard. I know a lot of other rescues will take them, you know, and that's okay by me, you know, because it's good they could house it. It is, but a lot of them, actually, believe it or not, or um, they pull them, or they get surrendered from... Uh, puppy mills and places like yeah. that, the ones that they can't sell or the mothers that are used up. Yeah. And they, they give them to a rescue down there. And then the next thing you know, they're, they end up on a uh, truck. Can you come help me with the prong collar, please? <clears throat> on the way up, up here and uh, get adopted up here. But, right. Yes, yeah, so in a way, you're just assisting the puppy mills. You are. And what happened is the one woman's coming in Friday to pick up uh, our little orange kitten. She has a dog that came from down south that they spayed it before it came up. They nicked the bladder in two spots. Now this dog is incontinent. So now these young dogs that are incontinent is not because they're ill. It's because they weren't treated right. They weren't operated on the right way. There was no precautions. Huh? So now we get them and we have a problem with them. Yeah. Being incontinent. You think something's wrong with the dog. No, it's not. You know? No, I know. Yeah. And that's what's happening. So, you know, she told me about that. I gotta go help uh, oh. with the dog. So thanks for your time and everything You're you do here. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> What'd you stop her for? People just do such stupid Do you want me to do anything before I leave? Stupid things. <clears throat> Oh no, all that stuff's put away, right? Sorry. Oh shit. And then I'll see you later. Have a good one. All right, take it easy. Oh, so I asked you some questions. Oh god, no. What? Why? So during the day, like. Why are you recording? Huh? Why are you recording me? You work with like special needs kids during yeah. the day. So your your previous job was it special needs kids or just yeah, regular just kids? Just regular, but I had special needs kids as well. Well, yeah, I know you told me about about Why some of them. Why are you recording me right now? So, yeah. Why? So how long how long have you been volunteering here? Two years. Two years? I think. Wow. How much time do you think you spend here? A lot. Well, not so much recently. Beforehand I did. <clears throat> but now it's like Thursdays and a couple of weekends during the month. And then a lot of times when you have the free time because yeah, of summer, yeah. you come up and help me. So sometimes, well, probably... 20 plus hours, 30 hours well, even? back before my hours changed, I was up here every day for three hours. And then that didn't include my Thursday nights, which I'm here for like five, and then the weekends. So, like, let's say you were, you were making the same amount of money at your day job coming here. How much do you think you're, uh, you're worth coming here 30 hours a week? You like, you can use your calculator, because I know it's a lot of math. What do you mean? Like, if I was <clears throat> doing 30 hours a week with my pay that I get at my job? Yeah. Well, 30 hours isn't as much as I work at my actual job, but... Well, really? So you do more time here sometimes than your real no, job? No, I work more than 30 at my actual job. Yeah, well, I work okay. like 38, but I mean, that's like 4.30-ish a week. Wow. Hours? So, I mean, that's a lot. You give a lot. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Is it weird? <laughs> oh, we're just doing a little project, that's all. Well, oh, okay. Alright, thank you. Thanks for everything you do. No problem. Anyway, he, um, he was stolen. And um, somebody, the person, whoever stole him, 
had a bunch of fight dogs and bait dogs tied to trees in the woods and they had not really dog houses but like little lean-tos and uh, he was used for bait they, they take a dog and they throw it in with a couple of fighting dogs and they, and they get the dog to attack him so it's like practice for fighting and he's probably been baited once or twice not a whole lot you can see you look you see the scars on his head <clears throat> you see some on the, on the back those like black lines that are that are on his head and well during that process he got a disease called babesia which is uh, contagious through being bitten and it never goes away so he has it for life and he can never be around another dog because if the dog bites him or he bites the dog, then the other dog's going to get it. And it gives him anorexic symptoms. So for a long time, he was really, really, really skinny. Like, really skinny. And he had to go on steroids. So when he was on steroids, it made him crazy. You, you know, you probably heard about being an athlete and all. What steroids do to you? Make you kind of angry and mean and... That's what happened to him. So now he's off the steroids, but it takes a long time for it to get out of his system. So he's, he, he became obsessive over things like toys. and uh, People used to hide things up here if they didn't want a dog to get to it. A bottle of juice, a Kong or a toy or something. And so every time he comes out, he comes right over here and he looks up there. Sometimes he used to jump on the fence, or if he saw anything in here, like the cat's tennis balls, would sometimes get out <clears throat> and see him in here. He tore this whole fence down. He tore the fence down trying to get at it. You see that? How oh, it's all bent? That's from him. Pulling, pulling at it. No. Yeah, and those plastic ties. For some reason, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and one of his things now is like if he's if he's idle, if he's bored, if he doesn't have toys to play with, because now he can you could structure his play with toys. And if he doesn't, he'll jump on people and he'll start grabbing at their shirt or their sleeve. And then sometimes he accidentally gets him in the gets him in the arm or something. And you know he's he's broken skin a few times on people. And it's not that he's he's a bad dog. He's not aggressive. He doesn't growl or bark. He doesn't mean it. He just can't help it, you know. So how long have you been coming here? Three days. Three days? You like it so far? Yeah? You have a favorite dog? Jingles. Jingles? You were just saying, you were asking if he's up for adoption. Do you want to hold her for me? Thanks. Oh. <laughs> You think you're interested in taking him home? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as let me. I, I thought you were going to pick Stuart. I thought Stuart was the one you liked. He's cool. But you like Jingles better? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what did you learn here so far? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? There's dogs. Some of them have some, uh, some needs. To say the least. Did you also learn that there's a lot of people that give a lot of themselves? What do you mean? Well, like when we talked to Taylor the other day, how much time she spends here, 30 hours, same with... And, and that's just a few of the people that you've met. There's a lot more of them. I've logged 21 hours of sleep. 21 hours. Now, why are you here? <laughs> Why did I make you come? You could say it, just say it. Been caught stealing, right? Yeah. Yeah, once when you were five. So what did, what did you find more rewarding, giving or taking? Giving. Yeah. You see those plaques on the wall over there? Mm -hmm. I don't know who those people are. Never met them. But they gave $40,000 just for those dog cages. That's, that would take me like two years to make that. All, everything you see around here was given. Everything. The whole building, everything in it, everything. It was all given by somebody. 
So I got one thing for you. What size are you? Medium? Yeah. Gray, blue, red, what do you want? Uh, gray. Gray? You might be stuck with large. No, no, I have them in there. Mm. They're probably upstairs now. I can go grab them. Yeah, there's only small and large here. You can grab them. They're upstairs. Yeah. Are they upstairs or down there? Huh? I assume they're upstairs. I, I, want, I wanted to get him with the shirt. Oh, well. You're an honorary ARF volunteer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank I, I you for your go, service. I'm going to grab it. But I'm just looking for